the death-defying acts of the tightrope walker have captivated audiences throughout history. Using a balance pole and a rigid wire to aid stability, these performers have thrilled spectators around the globe. But now one man is taking this dangerous art to new extremes. Preferring the serenity of nature to the spectacle of a crowd, this man performs to no one. Without the help of a balance pole and using a slack line that is constantly moving, Dean Potter has walked across some of the most exposed rock formations in the world. Dean is super Dean. He can do things that other people cannot do and get away with it. He's put his lines in some of the most outrageous places that you can imagine. He does things that people haven't done, and, and in that, it expands the human experience for everyone. This film follows the world's most daring highline walker for six months as he risks his life attempting a new world record. I'm in love with the rock, like the moth to flame. I can't help myself. As Dean walks the fine line between success and failure, his life is literally hanging in the balance. Yosemite National Park in California is a mecca for adrenaline junkies. It attracts people from all over the world who are compelled to push the boundaries of human experience. Yosemite is the center for slacklining. Yosemite is the center for base jumping. And Yosemite is the center for climbing. But even amongst this community of extreme risk takers, one man stands out from all the rest. Oh, 36-year-old yeah! Dean Potter is an all-round daredevil. Oh man, being just a wild man. <laughs> Dean's built up a reputation for doing things that others wouldn't dream of. Yeah! Yeah! He's a thrill seeker with a difference. He chooses not to use any safety equipment. I just want emotions rushing through me that normally aren't there in day-to-day -day life. Doing things with serious consequence whether it's death or mangling myself, puts me in the hyper-aware state and has become somewhat of an addiction for me. Nothing gives Dean the high that he craves more than slacklining. across huge chasms on a one-inch wide rope with no safety harness. When I go out there untethered, the, the feeling that if I slip, I, I die totally overwhelms me. And I am after this feeling of total control. That's what I'm after in all of life. And for now, it's the way I find it. Dean's exploits have made him famous around the globe and earned him hundreds of thousands of dollars from sponsorship. But he chooses to lead a reclusive life in Yosemite. Here 
at the cabin, his super primitive life. There's bears and deer and bobcat cruising by. It's the most relaxing place I have. I've always been kind of a loner. I seem to take a lot more personal time than the average person. When he's not risking his life in the mountains, Dean spends his days meditating and soul searching. I prefer thinking of myself as more of an artist than an athlete. I'm more moved by creativity and finding new ways to do things. But also, I think one thing about most artists is that they're a little out of the norm or have weird qualities or really intense in some ways. Dean's intense temperament means that he's constantly looking for new challenges. I'm drawn towards these obsessive goals. Over the next six months, Dean will push himself to new limits by trying to walk the two longest and highest unharnessed slack lines ever attempted. Doing these things and walking across the lines and breaking barriers, each time it's pushing myself beyond where I've gone. I wish I could find that heightened awareness without risking my life, but right now it's the only way I, I know how to find it. But I'm kind of helpless to the pull. I need to do it. Dean Potter is one of a small handful of people who practice untethered slacklining. Walking on a loose rope placed over a treacherous drop. Not by, you would always see the tightrope artist in magazines or on TV. And so it was always in my mind. The difference that we're walking on basically ribbon or flat nylon and and you don't use a pole or anything to assist you. Slacklining first built up a following in the early 80s amongst the rock climbers of Yosemite. One of the pioneers was a homeless man known as Chongo Tucker. Chongo was super influential because and I think he kind of single-handedly at first uh, spread the line. Chongo taught everybody, thousands of people probably in the end. Now aged 57, Chongo still lives a nomadic lifestyle. But Dean has been told that he's in Joshua Tree, a five-hour drive south of Yosemite. I hear Chongo's hanging out at his hotel with a friend. I haven't seen him for some years. He's right up here. At High Desert Hotel. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Hi. I'm Dean. What's up, buddy? Raleigh. All right, nice meeting you. It's been a long time no yeah. see. How are you? How are you? <laughs> Dean and I have been friends for a long time. Uh, Since 93. That's what? Only that long? 16 years, man. Well, oh, that's right. Considering your age, I guess that is a long time. I was 20 years old. first time I met Dean, he came walking up and he was kind of curious uh, what I was doing. I was walking a slack line and Dean came up and thought he might be interested in it. He had this old rowdy piece of nylon webbing about an inch wide stretched between this chubby van that I don't even think ran and this rock. I got to watch him the very first time he ever tried it and sure enough he was a natural right off the bat. But I was pretty amazed. I thought, uh-oh. He's going to be able to do it. He's got the gift. Yeah, that's cool. I remember, I think you stood up on it the first time, like the third try or something like that. No, I walked it the very first time. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Although he was Dean's mentor, Chungo hasn't walked a slack line himself well, in many years. Dean, it's been a long time. 
but he can't resist putting his skills to the test. But I think I can still do it. Foot in front of the foot. Wait. Is that, oh no, uphill's different. Woohoo! There is hardly anything as exciting as slacklining. It's just one of the most exciting things that one could ever do. It's the most exciting thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah. <sighs> Kind of Chungo up. has watched people pushing the limits of slacklining for more than 25 years. But even he is shocked by how far Dean is willing to go. Dean is going to attempt the longest high line ever done. And that is an amazing feat to do because I used to think there was a limit on how far you can go, and surely there is, but I didn't think it was all that far. <laughs> And even though it might seem extremely dangerous for an ordinary mortal, for Dean, it's within his grasp. But I still worry a little bit. That's a lot what's on my mind lately, thinking about these walks, is, is there ever a point where I'll, where I'll miss the line? Probably not, you know? Uh, but uh, Probably not. Probably not. But... You know, probably is kind of scary. Dean is part of a long tradition of slackliners pushing the boundaries of what is possible. I was the first person to walk on a nylon line up high. In 1985, another of Chongo's protégés rigged a line 3,000 feet up across Lost Arrow Spire in Yosemite National Park. Scott was attached to the line with a safety leash, but it brought him little comfort. Standing there on the edge, I was sick. It was so scary. Every cell in my body was screaming out in unison and individually. I thought, if I can do it down on the ground, I can do it up high. It's just, it's just a mental thing. What I didn't realize is it's two million years of, of evolution that you're fighting against. It takes a tremendous amount of effort. And I would step out a little bit and I would jump back and I'd step out a little bit and I would jump back and then I'd fall and I'd catch the line. The one inch lot wide line that I'm so used to walking on the ground and seems so wide to me because I walk narrower lines than that. When you get up high, it feels all of a sudden very small. And the nylon feels very weak, even though I know it's strong. You feel like you're gonna die. Fuck! Oh, shit! Fuck it in! Yeah. I got past that eighth step this time. That was where he fell last time. Even having a pole, even though it's not attached to anything, seems like it would help. Just to hold on to anything. And, you know, I so badly wanted something to hold on to. 16, that's the farthest. 17, that's the most he's made is 18. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Ah! It is a, an incredible feeling getting to the other side and stepping onto the rock on the other side. And um, it's a wonderful feeling of victory. First one in the world. 13 years later, in 1996, Dean Potter also traveled to Lost Arrow Spire. He planned to go one step further than Scott Balcom and attempt to walk the line with no safety leash. If anybody can do a really long, line untethered, Dean would be the one. I always thought I would go there and just strut across it. But then I went, set up the line, and um, was uncontrollably like brought down to sickness. Something drew me to cross that line.
Slacklining is the closest I feel to human flying. When I'm out on the line, I'm pressing against the air. I can feel it. When I'm in really my most heightened states, I actually see the air a little bit. All of my senses come together. The clarity I feel for the things close to me becomes way more tuned. Those who push the boundaries will eventually find them. Dean's been pushing the boundaries for a long time, and he's still alive. Dean's untethered walk across Lost Arrow Spire helped cement his reputation as a poster boy of the extreme sports world. For the last 13 years, Dean has made a successful living from sponsorship. To keep up his profile, he's in Utah to attend one of the biggest trade shows in the climbing scene's calendar. We were looking for an athlete that wasn't really mainstream. Somebody that would go from a Rolling Stone magazine to Esquire to Playboy to climbing to rock and ice. And Dean Potter was that man. Dean is the Tiger Woods of climbing. I think a lot of people look at Dean as being a, a role model for new athletes, for um, new, new branding, for uh, new excitement. Dean's not cheap, but he's well worth the money. Public relations is something that Dean has always struggled with. Sometimes people don't like you in this community, and they, but they kind of hide it. What's going on? How's it going? Nice to see you. You too. Uh, like, kind of case in point. <laughs> Coming to these events is, is pretty much, you know, one of my worst nightmares. Yo! We all have the, our special challenges, and some people might think it's the life-threatening stuff, but um, I've just always been terrified of having to speak in front of people. When I used to go in school, and then I had to do like a, um, you know, a report in front of the class and speak, I would freeze up. Sometimes I would even like tear up, almost start crying and stuff, couldn't deal. Other people learn these skills maybe in sixth grade. And you know, I'm learning them now at 36. There is another reason why Dean has been dreading this show. <laughs> He recently separated from his wife, Steph Davis, who's also a high-profile climbing superstar. Dean and Steph were together for 13 years and were known as the golden couple of the extreme sports community. Isn't that right? Beautiful, fun, friendly, giving, but um, also, uh, as I am, pretty absorbed in what she's doing. You know, I, I wasn't there all the time. I think that's why it's so hard, is because we both really love each other still, but um, see, it doesn't work. It's a pretty big difference not to be wearing the ring. You know, that's something I always had in every picture. That's your wedding ring? That's my wedding ring, yeah. So, kind of surprised they're still using it, but. Today will be the first time that Dean and Steph have been in the same room for several months. And we're supposed to sign our divorce papers and stuff at the show. To know I have to keep it together around thousands of people while I'm ending a big part of my life is it's pretty stressful. The last time that Dean and Steph were in Utah together, Dean did something that contributed to the breakdown of their marriage. On the license plate of Utah cars is the delicate arch, and everywhere in town on the restaurant menus and a dozen businesses in town, you see delicate arch. It had like this aura, this power, 
And I just thought it would be one of the coolest problems to solve how to climb the delicate arch. I thought, if anything, it would just inspire others to, you know, explore and push themselves, do new things, think outside the box. But it did the exact opposite. The big story in the climbing world these days involves the famous delicate arch. Last month, Dean Potter worked his way 60 feet up to the top. Some have criticized Potter for mounting what they call a publicity stunt. People really got super offended that I climbed the arch, and I couldn't quite figure it out. And they took pictures that show grooves. Dean was accused of leaving grooves on the arch, Cut right into the which is considered sacred by the local community. I want you to apologize for what you did. Well, can you do that, or, or do you want to do that? Show grooves in the surface of that rock. It looks like the rope cut right into the sandstone. Actually, the area where I made my climb is to the right of these pictures. I know for certain that my rope made no groove because it was positioned in a natural crack. The government came after me and tried to arrest me over it, even though they, there was nothing illegal done. Dean's decision to climb the delicate arch led to him being dropped by his main sponsor. It also had unexpected consequences for his marriage. The worst part of Delicate Arch was that Steph lost her job over it as well, and, and she really wasn't even involved. She was just being supported. Looking back at it, it seems like the beginning of the end of our relationship to lose such a major connection over a climb that I did really started making her think what she was attached to. Would you still do it tomorrow if it was the same things at stake? I guess that's the messed up thing about me is that I probably would climb the delicate arch again, even knowing, you know, how much I lost over, over that climb. And, you know, that kind of spells out who I am. In retrospect, I see that my relationship was the most important thing. But in actuality, I'm almost unhealthily obsessed with what I do. Dean has decided to try to get over his breakup in the only way he knows how. Risking his life on the highest and longest untethered slackline ever attempted. Like the moth to flame, I, I can't help myself. Dean Potter is at a low point after recently separating from his wife. The last couple months have been way different for me. I guess for the last 13 years, I had pretty solid family action, and this winter was first winter all alone. It's kind of freaking out. He is at this point in his life where he's got a lot of personal issues that he needs to deal with. He's just started to move back forward. He's just starting to focus on his next project. That he's trying to, I think, get the closure that he needs. To try and get over his breakup, Dean's turning to the one thing that he's always relied on, taking extreme risks. All my life, in the last 20 years, something that has at least been consistent for me, that isn't taken away from me or can't fall away, is the raw. Dean is getting in shape for his next extraordinary challenge. Forty-eight is like the lowest. You might have that. It's awesome. All our favorite treats. I can chew. He plans to walk the highest and longest untethered slackline ever attempted. 
At 3,600 feet high, or three times the height of the Eiffel Tower, El Cap in Yosemite is one of the world's most famous rock faces. We've got to organize all our stuff and um, head up to the biggest, best cliff in the world, El Capitan, you know. To help him rig the slack line, Dean has called in world-class climbers, Eamon and Evo. How are you doing, Evo? Pretty good. Just doing class preparations to go to the top of the mountain. It'll be a good trip. After an hour's trek, the group reach the first vertical wall and come across evidence of previous ascents. There are lines that people leave here to make this part uh, easier and to help people, you know, escape the wall when they have to. Um, but you can see as this rope right beside you has a big nick in it. Do you see that part? Check it out. <laughs> Whose line is that? I don't know. <laughs> it's not. I didn't put this line there, but that's why they're, it's a little scary. It's good to be the second guy up the rope. <laughs> Being such an accomplished climber, it takes Dean just over an hour to reach the summit. Thank you! Yep, line's fixed. But for everyone else, it's a grueling 13-hour trek. The group will have to camp on the exposed mountaintop for seven days, with temperatures falling as low as minus 10 degrees. For Dean, setting up the slack line is the moment when it all becomes real. Check out that wind, man. That thing went sideways. Do you ever get nervous, Dean, about doing any of this? Yeah, I'm nervous right now. It's hard to get into the groove. It's pretty major going down over the side of that was a good El Cap. <laughs> Dean and Eamon will anchor the slack line between two ledges, which are 400 feet down from the summit. The line itself is made of a combination of steel and nylon and is able to withstand the weight of a truck. The tension has to be exactly right to be able to walk without slipping. It takes eight hours for Dean to be satisfied. Working with Dean can be tough at times, just like everything. He's putting his life out there. So he wants to know every aspect, of every little part of the rigging. You know, he's pretty intense, but it's good. Got everything really anchored nice and tension the line. So yeah, ready to, uh, ready to walk here soon. Dean will practice his walk with a safety leash. He will also wear a specially designed lightweight parachute that could offer some protection should he fall. My backup device, the line is to fail, which is, you know, something that could happen. I'd be safe. And another thing is just dealing with the fear. I think that's the tension you've sensed. You quite don't understand or something, but when someone's scared, they act different. They act a little hit cagey. Dean is all too aware of what can happen if something goes wrong. He's lost many friends, including fellow professional climber Dan Osman. You used to totally shut me down when the first time I 
looked down on the ground and saw my friend Dan Osmond dead with, you know, little blood coming out of his edges of his eyes like tears. I never wanted to be that guy laying there. I'd like to think there's something after death, but all I've seen in reality is that it's over. When I see something die, it's gone. Dean is ready to make his first attempt at walking the line. If he makes it to the other side, this will be the biggest drop that he's ever walked across. Try to get somewhat comfortable up here because I'm kind of shitting myself. Why? Why are you shitting yourself? Look down, man. It's freaking gnarly down there. It's the most exposed line I've ever walked. It's unique because underneath your feet, you've got 2,600 feet of pure air. There are probably people who think I'm crazy for doing what I'm doing, and they're probably right compared to them, compared to the way they think and feel and are so bound by norms, then I am crazy, but insane or enlightened, it's all pretty close. I would, I would say it's just how you look at it. Well, that's going to be awesome. sure if I'm making it or not. As I go further and further, I get more and more confident. If any thought comes in, I'm like, this is so fucking out there. I want it over. I want to do it now. Damn it. Pretty terrified out there most of the time on, on, on such a demanding line like this. The highest line I've ever been on. like the teacher right now. It's really amazing. It's just like, huh? How about with this? With that? If I'm lucky, I come into that zone and hold it. I'm focusing on my breath and uh, really trying to stay calm and balance my way across the line. That's all that's really going on in my head. It's 
super fucking intense. Ah, beautiful. <gasps> now, as I'm really thinking about is uh, um, catching that fucking line. <laughs> That's the only way I make it across. Dean has attempted to walk El Cap before. In 2007, he was up here with his ex-wife. It was the scene of a big row, and Dean aborted his attempt. I had always gone there with Steph for years and years and years. From all these memories, coming here, sleeping up here for weeks, and then going through a big divorce, right? At the same time that I'm up there and stuff, it's feelings of kind of failure attached to um, my marriage. It's just filled, filled with memories. Everything is set for Dean to walk the line with no safety leash, but he appears preoccupied. I think it is a big deal for Dean to have broken up with Steph, and I think it has affected him uh, it's a very traumatizing thing. But Dean is such a focused man that, you know, he can turn that energy around and focus it in places. But I think he probably really needs this, and it's uh, a distraction from, you know, that unfortunate part of life when you have to break up with someone you care deeply about and love. Okay, there we go. Okay, pull. One, two, three. Following yesterday's practice walk, Dean is not satisfied with the tension of the line. He asks Evo and Eamon to help make it more rigid. Okay. But as the team continue to put pressure on the line, bad luck strikes. Okay. A part of the pulley system bends under the intense pressure, ripping one of the safety lines from the wall. That's what it's all about. Although it's fixable, it doesn't help Dean's state of mind. We pulled this piece of equipment too hard and it exploded. It's part of our pull system. These longer lines and with this new material, it puts a lot of more tension on the system than um, or on the climbing equipment than it was intended for. Looks like that got pulled through that hole. And that ended up po the... popped off. If it pops like that when I'm out there on it, um, I'd probably fall just like without knowing. A little bit of paranoia is uh, probably a good thing in the dangerous game that he plays. Dean spends the rest of the day deliberating whether to walk the line unleashed. But the equipment failure, the thoughts about death, and the trauma of his divorce are weighing heavily on his mind. It just seems like too many little things not feeling right. Knowing that we broke a 24 kilonewton piece of gear, thinking, Oh, what if uh, that thing shifts all of a sudden and goes to a backup? Yeah, that's how it is. If I was psyched, I would have gone for it. And instead, I was just, like, uneasy and feeling tired. Dean leaves the mountain, having failed to achieve what he set out to do. I was feeling really tired and um, questioned a lot of things. This is the way it goes. Often it's months and months. I've tried things for years. I know I can push through. These things take some time. Dean heads home to reflect on what happened at El Cap and whether or not he will be able to recover from this setback. It's been two months since Dean Potter failed in his attempt to walk an unleashed slackline at El Cap. A lot of things kind of went on in my mind being on El Cap and 
you know, many things didn't seem right. So obviously, the end of a 13-year relationship is uncomfortable. And my motivation just went away. I started looking down at the ground, thinking, you know, thoughts of death if I messed up. You know, I wanted to do it. I wanted it pretty bad, but I didn't want it bad enough to step over the edge where I might die. Eager to get over his disappointment, Dean is already focusing on his next challenge. 220 foot line right here, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brand new, never been pulled. He has found a location for a potentially record-breaking new line. And he spent a week on his own in the wilderness preparing it. I've been coming here for about a week all by myself. It seems like the ultimate to just be out there with the birds, feeling the air, kind of lifting me a little bit and making me light. Taft Point, across the Yosemite Valley from El Cap, is over 3,200 feet high, and the line is more than 100 feet long. You know, it is the longest line significantly, and it's a major step for me. Part of me is uninterested with the numbers. Part of me kind of likes it. I remember first starting out that I could barely walk across a 20-foot high line. And now I'm at a level where I can solo a 100-foot line. Makes me feel psyched. Like at El Cap, Dean's first step is to try to get comfortable on the line wearing a safety leash. Fucker. Despite falling twice, Dean has decided that this time he is ready to try to walk the line without any safety equipment. It's just this mental game, you know? It's not the same with a leash, but it really is. You just kind of play a little trick on yourself and slip the leash off and do the same thing I just did for half a dozen times before. I made it happen. That's what was going on in my mind, is power of will. 
making things happen is amazing energy. I could do anything up there. It's as pure as it gets. There's nothing but my stripped down body walking my path. I feel like I'm climbing out of a um, darker place. There's nothing. <laughs> one of the deeper lows I've been in in my life. And I was kind of resentful of being divorced, getting dumped and stuff, but the whole world's kind of opening up to me, you know? know people putting me up at this place you know in their mind because I'm I'm good at a sport the stunts I do and stuff they're they're awesome and they make me feel good in the moment but looking back when you when I'm kind of depressed and stuff it's it's not really it doesn't pick me up I'm not thinking yeah I'm great cuz you know I can walk a slack line. Maybe that's not my main focus in life now is being happy with every day and not needing to do these big achievements or to prove myself to be happy. And that's what it's taken all my life so far. Something about me still has this will to live that's way stronger than anything else. And that, that's pretty much my highest energy is, you know, stay alive. for an equal stake in human territory. True Blood comes to four on Wednesday at 10. Next tonight, another chance to see Friday's turn of events. Darren takes a gamble with five grand in how to beat a casino.